Hi guys, uh, greetings of the day. Uh, myself, Professor Vijay Tawadhan, and in this today's session, we are going to have a discussion on how to solve a problem on projection of solids. Okay, uh, now in the solids, let me show you how to solve it in the manual construction that is using the grid block, which is using the square pyramid. Now, this is a square pyramid which we are going to solve it. Now, let us consider an example problem for the same and let us discuss further about it. Now let us consider an example problem to solve it in a grid box, which is like this. A square pyramid of 35 millimeter size and 65 millimeter axis length rests on HP on one of its base edges, okay? Uh, draw the projections of the pyramid when the axis is inclined to HP at 45 degree and VP at 30 degree. So this is how we are going to get it. So in the initial position, we have to do the uh, corner, sorry, side resting uh, square and the front view of this is going to be the triangle and then it is going to be inclined to HP at 45 degree first. That is the triangle has to be inclined at 45 degree and then the top view is again inclined at 30 degree. So here we are supposed to construct the beta. Now let me show you how to solve this problem in your booklet that is in the manual drawing. Now, uh, as we have already discussed, we need to construct a square resting, uh, side resting square. So for what, uh, using a pencil and a scale, using a pencil and a scale. So let me start with somewhere over here. So measure three and a half boxes in your grid book and then draw a perpendicular line from this point, again, three and a half boxes in your grid book and again, perpendicular line and again, perpendicular line all these lengths must be measuring three and a half boxes. And afterwards, since we are discussing the pyramid, so the, in the pyramid top view, we need to represent the slant edges. The representation of a slant edges is nothing but making the diagonal lines as a dark line in case of a square completes the top view. Now let me complete the annotation part and show it to you guys. Now you guys can see that I have completed the annotation part, which includes the naming of the corners and the apex that is uh, as well as the axis position, which includes the apex and the dimensioning part. And to get the front view, we have to draw these three projectors, which is already drawn now here. And after which, now uh, using your scale and a pencil, make sure that you are going to draw an axis height for a six and a half boxes like this. Okay, so that is going to represent the. Now, after drawing an axis, is, uh, I hope you guys might be listening some helicopter sound, so let me pause a while. Yeah, uh, sorry for the disturbance, okay. Uh, so once we have drawn the six and a half boxes like this, uh, then using your pencil, you can make sure that you are going to represent the apex position like this. So after which we need to complete the front view. To complete the front view using a HB pencils, connect B dash, A dash to O dash, which is going to be a slant triangular face. Then O dash, C dash, D dash as a slant triangular face, and then get back to the, and that is nothing but B dash, A dash, that is nothing but completing the base. Now this completes the required front view, and after which uh, one has to complete the dimensioning part, that is uh, one has to show that the axis height is 65 millimeter. So by this, the first stage is completed in all aspects as per the condition given in the question. Now let me go to the second stage. Now, as I told you, we are supposed to rotate the solid in the clockwise direction. While doing it so, since the axis inclination is given, so it is very difficult to rotate the axis straight away so that we are going to rotate the base. So now the base is inclined at an angle of 90 minus theta. So the angle theta that is HP inclination is given as 45 degree. So base must be inclined to HP at an angle of 90 minus theta that is nothing but 45 degree in the clockwise direction. During that, one can say that it is going to rest on the corner, the, sorry, not the corner, that is side C dash D dash because it is resting on one of which edges is given in the question clearly. Now, upon doing so, one can see that we are going to mark the point C dash and D dash like this. Now, I'm going to show you the same. Now you can see that I have located a point C dash D dash on the XY line keeping some convenient distance. Now after which 
as I told you, base is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. So for which, using your protractor, keeping the protractor at C dash D dash, one has to draw an angle of 45 degree in the clockwise direction. In the clockwise direction. Now, one has to construct this line. Now, after constructing a line to get the position of B dash A dash exactly, then using the compass, with C dash as the center and B dash as the radius, okay? With C dash as the center and B dash as the radius, now what one has to do? Take that measurement and keep it at C dash and D dash in the second stage and without changing the radius, one has to draw an arc over here. Now, the point what we are going to get here is going to be called as B dash and A dash. Now, to get the position of O dash, so in the same fashion, using the compass, measure the distance between C dash to O dash, which is also equal to distance between C dash and, sorry, B dash and O dash. Now, using this measurement, keeping the compass center at C dash, without changing the radius, one has to draw a constructional arc like this. Now, the keeping the compass at the position of A dash, without changing the radius, one has to draw an arc like this. Now we have got the three points. Now you have to complete the front view at an angle of 45 degree, which is as given in the question. Let me complete it now. Now you can see that I have completed the uh, required front view at a given angle. And afterwards, uh, using your scale, what you are supposed to do is, extend the axis line towards the xy line which is as shown here okay and then show that the angle of this line with respect to hp is 45 degree because in the question it is clearly mentioned that axis is inclined to hp at 45 degree so that's why we have to show the dimension is with respect to the axis and afterwards to get the top view we have to draw the projectors now let me show you one of the projectors now draw the projectors from this stage front view and the previous stage top view like this. Now, upon drawing these projectors, we are going to get an intersection position of the apex. In the same fashion, the remaining base as well as the axis position, we have to draw it and then we have to connect it. Now, let me complete it and show it. Now, you guys can see that I have completed all the projectors and marked all the respective points to draw the top view. Now, according to the rules of visibility, so first we are supposed to complete the boundary lines. Now, let me show you what are the boundary lines. Now, using your HB pencil, starting with the corner A, connect it to B, then coming to C, then O, and then D, and then back to A, which completes the boundary. Now, the second point says that identify the visible base or invisible base. If the base is visible, make it as visible. If the base is invisible, make it as invisible. So when the observer is seeing this object from the top, obviously the base is away from the observer. Hence the base edges must be invisible edges. Now the base edges must be shown as invisible edges. Now, which is the base edge? That is D to C is supposed to be shown as invisible edge. And however, the edges AD, AB and AC forms the boundary, it should be always visible. Now, since the helicopter sound is once again coming, so let me pause the video for a while. As guys, uh, sorry for the disturbance of the noise because I reside near to the Indian Air Base, so they will keep on practicing. Sometimes it will be audible. Please uh, ignore it. Okay. Now, according to the second point, we have identified the base as invisible and we have shown that the CD as invisible. However, the remaining base edges comes on the boundary, it has to be always visible. Now, uh, the slant edges, we are, if we are going to connect it, that is, the slant edge OA and OB is going to pass partially over the invisible base. Hence, OA and OB must be visible according to the third point of rules of visibility. So, keeping that in mind, that is, uh, you are supposed to connect this line OA and OD as a dark line like this. Now this is supposed to be a dark line, not an invisible edge. And then OD and OC is going to form the boundary. It is always going to be the visible. 
and at last we are supposed to show the axis line that is the chain line uh, which is starting from O1 to O over here like this. Now this completes the second stage front view. Now to start with the third stage now again the same axis is inclined to VP at an angle of 30 degree. Now you can see that the length of the axis is getting reduced. Now one can say that we are supposed to consider the apparent angle for the given conditions. Since the true angle is given to us, henceforth we are supposed to consider the apparent angle. Now let me show you how to do the apparent angle constructions. So for which, now let me have a constructional line which is parallel to xy line like this. Okay. Now this constructional line, you are going to draw one box below the xy line so that you are going to have a constructional line so that at any point of time the image what we are going to reconstruct will not cross above the xy line or will not go beyond the box the beyond the box is nothing but your grid box okay now let me show you what are the things to be done now locate a point anywhere on this uh, line what we have drawn which is a constructional line and after which at an angle of 30 degree so we are supposed to draw a line like this now this inclination is called as the true angle 30 degree and after constructing this true angle 30 degree we are supposed to represent the true length on the true angle so for which using a point sorry using a pencil locate a point anywhere on this 30 degree line and mark that point as o1 and in the same fashion then Take the compass and measure the distance between O dash to O1 dash, which is a true length. Measure this true length and with O1 as the center in the third stage top U, then without changing the radius, one has to draw an arc. And once you get the intersection position, from there one has to draw the locus of a line. After drawing this locus of a line, now we need to get the apparent angle. Now how to get the apparent angle now? One has to measure the distance of O1 to O in the second stage top view. That is nothing but the reduced axis length in the second stage has to be me measured. And now with O1 as the center, now without changing the radius, one has to draw an arc over here like this. Now you can see, we are going to get one more arc. Now you can locate a point over there to avoid any confusion. And then that point is going to be marked as O. And after which, taking your scale and a pencil, join the line O to O1. And that O to O1 should be extended till the constructional line what you have drawn, or it can be extended till the XY line however it is feasible and afterwards you are supposed to measure this angle using your protractor and this angle whatever it is going to measure that is called as angle beta now you can see that we have completed the beta construction which is measuring as 44 degree for this particular problem and afterwards what is the next step what we are supposed to do is using the arc technique get the other position other than O and O1 you are supposed to get A, B, C, D. Now measure the distance of O to A using the compass. Measure the distance of O to A using the compass. Next keeping the compass at O1 then with the same radius draw a constructional arc. Now you measure the distance between O to A now then measure this distance using the compass and O as the center, again, without changing the radius. Now draw one more arc over here. Now the intersection point will give us point A. That is nothing but the corner A. In the same fashion, using this arc technique, we are supposed to complete the B, C, and D, and reconstruct the same top view at an angle of 44 degree. Now let me complete the same and show you to you guys. Now you can see that I have reconstructed the 
second stage top you at an angle of beta now you can refer it over there and now to get the front view now what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to draw the projectors now projector from the apex i am going to draw it here now the projector of apex from both the stages we are going to draw and then the intersection point we are going to locate it as apex now in the same fashion we are supposed to draw all the remaining projectors and we are supposed to mark the respective points now let me complete the same and show it to you guys uh, now to save the time i have already completed all the projectors upon drawing over that now according to the rules of visibility as the first point says that we should be completing the boundary lines now let me complete the boundary lines using the hb pencils that is a dash to o dash and then to c dash and then to d dash and then to a dash back this completes the boundary after which now we have to identify whether the base is visible or invisible when the observer is seeing this object from the front obviously for the front view the base is nearer to the observer hence for the base edges must be shown as dark line using hb pencils so one can show that all the four base edges as dark lines and at last the slant edges which are passing partially or completely inside the visible base are going to be the invisible that is o dash d dash is going to be shown as invisible edge and however o dash b dash is passing outside the visible base it must be visible and however line oc and od forms the boundary at last using the Uh, scale and a pencil join this axis line in the form of a chain line like this which is as shown now this completes the problem in all aspects so if you are having any sort of doubts please feel free to communicate to me and also if you have liked this video please put the like button to this video and please do share and subscribe to my youtube channel and once again thank you very much for visiting my youtube channel to learn the subject called as engineering graphics thank you once again guys